Hey guys, it's Jeremy here. I want to be creating this simple 3D retro effect and it's going to make the illusion that it's 3D just by using simple shapes and strokes and patterns. So what we're going to do is jump on a new artboard and you want to use like a slab serif or a bold font. I'm using slabs condensed. So I'll just scale this up and I'll just change the font. And I want to put it on bold. And we want to turn this into a shape because it's a type now. So we go to the top left corner, press type and click on create outlines. And now this is going to be recognized as a shape. And now we, what we want to do is we have to zone off everything. We can also customize this type a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this like that. I'll delete this and I'm just going to join these two. So, you know, you can play around with the type, customize it if you want, but I kind of like that. So we're going to break it up into shapes and we're going to press the pen tool by pressing P. And what I'm going to do is just use a stroke. So select the bright color. And what I'm going to do now is go through the middle or the center of the width of the, of the letter. So we'll start to go, I'll use shift and left click. I'm going to turn off my fill, just get rid of that black. I'll bump up the stroke so you can see what's happening. And I'll just go through the letter and holding shift just keeps the proportions on horizontal or vertical. And I'll just go through. If it goes back to the fill, you can just select it and then just use the eyedropper and select the stroke again. And there you go. You can also break up more parts of the of the layout. You can see this is a bit too much too low. Can also break this up a bit more like that. When you want to make sure that you these sections of the corners, you want to make sure that the stroke <clears throat> goes all the way through it because if it's too short, it's not going to register as a shape when we use the shape builder tool. So if you're happy with it, what I'm going to do now is select it all, press shift M and I'm just going to select this green color in my swatches panel. And you can see now if I put my mouse over each shape, it's going to recognize it as a shape. You can see here that it's recognizing all this as one. That's because this stroke here is not touching. So if I just go back and I'll just make sure this stroke is overlapping. So to go in the outline mode, that's control or command Y. So I'll select it again, press shift M. The shape builder tool is also on the left as well. And now if I redo it, you can see it's all one shape. So if I select the color, I will get rid of the stroke. So you can see the stroke, click this little um, button there. And I'm gonna go through and just left click on all the parts there. So you can see, now we've got all these parts. So you can see how some of them are grouped. So just select it all. Go to the top left, press object and go to ungroup. So now we've got all these separate pieces. So now depending on where the light source is hitting it, you'll design and select where the color is going to go. So my light is coming from this direction, coming down. So I'll select the darker bits here and on the inside of the R. As you can see there, so the light is hitting these parts here. So it starts, it's starting to add a bit of a 3D dimension to it. So we can leave it here, we can leave it flat if we want to, or we can actually, you know, edit it. I'm just going to make a copy over here. And what I'm going to do is press control Y and just delete all these ex excess lines that we created from before. So we can delete that because we don't need it anymore. We just need the fills. As you can see there. So cool. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a bit of a gradient. So I'm going to make a box here and quickly go to my gradient tool. You can go to window and go on gradient. And then what I'm going to do is drag this blue, drag it down, drag this green and drag it down onto this little section here. You can also click the four lines and press show options. And then you'll get the option to move these sliders up and down and change the angle. We'll just leave on this for now. And now what I'll do is I'm going to select this blue part now and I'm going to use this gradient. You can also press I for the eyedropper and left click on this shape up here to select it. So if I select this eyedropper, select that, boom, just like that. So now because we're using this gradient, you can see that it's in the wrong angle. So we have to change the angle. 
So if I just drag the box and what I can do, hold shift and put your mouse over this angle or this degree sign and you just use your mouse wheel and scroll through it like that. I'll do the same for this. This one, I'll scroll like this. You can also edit the gradient. It's a bit too harsh, so you can just drag this slider here. I like to drag the furthest one out in and this little diamond one to about in the middle. Just so it sort of like fades out nicely. But each one can be a little slightly different. I can drag that and I'm just gonna edit the angle. Just like that, so you can you can see it's starting to have this nice effect. This one, I'm leaving it like that. And if you need to edit it, you can always just go make it a bit longer. If you want the gradient to last a bit further. Cool, so it's starting to look cool, looking good. Now what I can do is add a bit of pattern just to give it some feel. I'm going to press P for the pen tool and I want to just make a quick stroke. I will make it green and you want to press shift X to shift it from fill to a stroke, bump the stroke up to about three points. I'm going to select this, hold alt and shift. If you're on a Mac, it's going to be option and shift, drag it. And from this point, all we're going to do is press control D or command D and it should duplicate like this. So now what I can do is select it, go to object pattern, make, and you can see how it's sort of, the end bit is sort of duplicating on each other. What we have to do is just edit the width. So if we just bump the width in like that, it should line them up. And you can see if it doesn't line up perfectly, you can just edit 0.1 or, or whatever you need to. But for this tutorial, it's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna press escape. Now you'll see I have the stroke in my swatches panel up the top here. I'm going to grab these two green bits and I'm going to press Control C, Control F to duplicate and paste it on top of this one. And I'm gonna select the stroke. So now if I drag it, you'll see it's there. And what I'm gonna do is go to my transparency panel. You can go to window and transparency to open that. I'm gonna to go to multiply. You can see that or even screen will look, look good. We'll lighten it up. And I can select them both, go to object. So select this, hold shift, select these two shapes. I can go to object, transform, and then if you click on transform each, we can have some parameters that we can change. So you want you want to untick the box transform objects, untick that, press preview, and change the angle to 45 degrees. And I can also scale this down. So if you go like 80%, make sure you, you do the horizontal and vertical. So it's just made it a bit smaller. So you can see without the effect and with the effect, it's put an angle and made it more smaller. So press okay. And we've got this nice pattern there, it's looking good. Now I just want to make it a bit more thick, make it a bit more 3D so it's sitting nicely. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to just move these out. So what I want to do, I want to select all this, press Control C, Control F, go to a Pathfinder and click Unite. And that should make a shape, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do is just bring that to the back so you can go to Object, Arrange, center back and this is going to be at the back so if i just select this dark color i'm going to bring it up one so just bring it up a couple layers as you can see there you can press control and the right square bracket on your keyboard and that should bring it up but then what i'm going to do now is just tap it with my arrow keys you know, depending how i want it to look so that's looking kind of cool cool i can select this the, the blue there or the dark one, depending on what you want. You can see that's kind of looking cool, but it's not connecting here. You can see there's this space here, and I don't, I don't like that, I wanna fix it up. So I'll use the pen tool, and I'll find the corners, and create a shape, and then I'll send it to the back. So I go object, arrange, send backward, but the shortcut key is control, left, square bracket. So you can see, you can keep doing that, as you can see the shortcut. So I'm just gonna do that on my keyboard, and just keep bringing it back like that. I'll do the same for this. So it goes behind. It's because there's a, there's a few more layers because I just have the other design, but usually you should be fine. Uh, 
and this bit here. So just tweaking it a little bit makes a big difference. And if you do it directly, you don't have to bring it behind. You can just sort of you can wing it. Yeah, that's fine. Cool, look how much better that looks. It's all connected. And just, I'm gonna select all these little triangle shapes I made and I'm gonna unite those just to make it one shape. And then I'll bring it to the back. As you can see, I'm just bringing it up like that. Cool, looking sweet, looking good. We can add texture if we want, or we can leave it like this. Or we can play around with it. But that's how you make that. And what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna make a copy of it. And I'm gonna add just a nice little stroke. Once again, I'm gonna select it all. Press Control C, Control F. Go to the Pathfinder, press Unite. Now we're gonna add a white stroke or a blue stroke, depending on what you want. Bump this stroke up by to like 20. And just make sure that's behind everything because you just want it as an outline if you want to make a sticker or something like that. And you can see there it's behind. But you see, you get this different point here and we don't want that. So in order to, for us to fix that, just I'm just gonna lock this and make sure we select the back one. Go to my stroke panel. You can go to window and stroke to open that up. And I'm gonna select the cap and click round and the corner round. And that should get rid of that little point there. And you can see it rounds off, looks nice. And I can change it to the blue if I want. So it looks like it's all connected together or like inverted. And I kind of like that, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, that's how you do the tutorial. That's how you create this nice chiseled effect, retro effect, whatever you want to call it, but it's pretty fun to do. And if you play around, you can create like a whole alphabet or letters and stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Leave a comment below if this was helpful or not and subscribe for more content every week.